Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is a guy that works with, you know, strategy and finance and business acumen and uh, top performers and sales and just, he's like, he's like that guy that like, you want to hang out with because like afterwards you just feel like you're smarter and better than you were before. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. Landmodo.com. And most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings. PostingDomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Are you, are you excited to uh, talk to a fellow Floridian? I, I am, yes. Like, you'll, you'll notice, Mark, like, uh, I mean, our, our audience can't see this, but, you know, he's like chillaxed out. He's in a tank top. He's, he's, he's embracing the Florida lifestyle, as I like to do every day, too. Yeah, I mean, if, I, I'll have to keep you guys on track if we start, you know, digressing into gators or... Um, you know, Cuban food, something like something like that. So All right. I'll keep things keep I'll us keep on track. On track. So our guest is Andy Storch from AndyStorch.com. And to put it simply, he is a performance coach, a sales leader, international speaker. And um, he's worked with uh, big companies, Salesforce.com, Oracle, Google, Box, Toyota, Genentech, State Farm, Red Bull, Deloitte, KPMG, HP, Sony. Bechtel, Cisco, and others. And finally, he's talking to somebody like us, a prestigious podcast. So Andy Storch, congrats. Welcome. Thank you so much, Mark and uh, Scott. Great to be here. And uh, you know, I have to say, um, even that I do my own podcast and interview others, it's, it's always funny uh, when you get introduced on another podcast and you, know, you can get kind of caught up thinking like, ah, you know, what I do is not that special. And then you introduce me and I think, wow, that guy sounds really impressive. I'd like to meet that guy. Well, that's yeah, me. Okay. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. Um, I mean, oh yeah. You're also the host of the Entrepreneur Hot Seat Podcast, which right. uh, had yours truly on it. So That's right. You, it just got you, enhanced by having you as, on as a guest recently. Well, nice of you to say. Well, we'll you know, we'll see about that. Right. Um, so Andy, let's, let's rewind the tape. And where, you know, I know you, you started off in the corporate world, but it kind of talks about, you know, your journey into, um, you know, becoming this, this, you know, leader, if you will, of uh, ambitious human beings. Sure. Yeah. It, it has absolutely been a journey. I think like everything is, I mean, I think it's so easy to look at people sometimes and say, oh, they just have it figured out their overnight success or whatever it is. But, you know, like you have been slowly building your land business for years and thousands of transactions. I know from talking to you, um, you know, things have just been slowly coming together through plenty of good and bad decisions over the years for me. And um, I, I know this is uh, a lot about entrepreneurship and for entrepreneurs. And I have always kind of had a passion for entrepreneurship, at least since after college. Um, I grew up in, um, in a family that was big on traditional education. My parents are both teachers. And the only goal really for me was you must go to college. And uh, so I worked hard for that. Um, I got into the only school I ever wanted to go to, which was the University of Florida. Go Gators. Uh, Follow my dad there, speaking of Florida. And um, I then things changed because I read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad uh, by um, Kiyosaki, who I know many of your listeners are probably familiar with. And it got me thinking more about this idea of entrepreneurship. And I tried my hand at a few things um, that didn't work. I tried a couple sales things. I sold alarms door to door for ADT. I don't think I sold any. Um, it was not very successful. Um, and then my then girlfriend, now wife, and I moved to California. Uh, and I started a couple different startups, joined a couple different startups. Again, nothing that worked out, but got experience doing a lot of different things. And um, we both ended up going back to school to get our master's degree. I got my MBA from University of Southern California, uh, Marshall School of Business, again, because I believe strongly in traditional education. Um, and got a job at, uh, I was working in, in insurance for a while and had also, again, these startup businesses on the side. I used to buy and sell sports tickets 
Um, I had season tickets at one time for about 15 different teams and I would sell the tickets individually um, to kind of make extra money on the side. It really started just so I could go to Dodger games while I lived in LA. And um, I started accumulating Dodger season tickets to kind of pay for my, my addiction to Dodger baseball. And then that morphed into some other businesses that um, never really got big. And I got lucky because a couple of years out of business school, I got a job with a really awesome consulting company called BTS. And I was there seven years um, traveling around the world, building uh, business simulations, running workshops for big companies uh, like some of the companies you mentioned, Salesforce and, and so on. And um, just gained a lot of leadership and coaching skills from working with executives and managers at all these, um, these growing and big companies. And uh, the last couple of years I decided, you know, I wanted to work a little bit more with, with individuals. I wanted to do something even more entrepreneurial. So I got certified as a coach. Um, I started getting into a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I started running uh, mastermind groups for dads, uh, ambitious dads, and I'm heavily involved in a, in a dad community online and run masterminds for them. And uh, about three months ago, uh, I left my job actually to uh, become an independent contractor, uh, selling and running training, similarly to what I did before with, uh, with the consulting business. So um, now I'm doing all of those things, you know, coaching, facilitating workshops, um, running training for big companies. And I also, as you mentioned, have the podcast, The Entrepreneur Hot Seat, which I started uh, about six months ago in May, 2017. And that's, uh, it's been a blast. It's how you and I met. Wow. That's, that's quite a story. Scott Todd. I mean, I'm just shocked that, that like that brought him all the way just to meet you. That's, that's I, all of phenomenal. that was to meet the two of you really. <laughs> I mean, since I was a little baby, that's all I really wanted to do. And yeah, so like, I, I set all these all, things in motion. Right. All that experience has brought you to today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, it's, like the, it's like the butterfly effect, right? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I talked to so many people and, and everything that we have done, good or bad, does bring us to today. And, you know, a lot of people sit around and have regrets about the bad decisions they made. I've made plenty of poor decisions. Like I said, I've had a lot of failed startup businesses. Um, but I love my life right now. And I, if I didn't do all those things, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today. So I try not to have any regrets. Yeah, I mean, before the podcast, Scott, he's like, I just played, you know, you know, basketball for three hours. He's got a bike in the back. He's wearing, you know, a... Uh, I, I try to live a pretty active lifestyle yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, it's really active. It's, it's, it's you know, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. And so this lifestyle, Andy, is, is amazing. I mean, this is, this is kind of like what everybody wants. They want this freedom. They want flexibility. They want passive income. They want, you know all of that. So, um, but you know, if we're going to rewind the tape on leadership, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let's say that Scott and I were in front of a, a big cauldron and we're making this amazing leadership stew. Hmm. What would be the ingredients that we would need to add to make a great leadership stew? Hmm. That's interesting. It's something I think about a lot and there's obviously thousands of books on leadership and different opinions on that. Um, I think the number one thing that I would put in there is empathy and the, the ability to connect with people and listen to people. Um, and it's something that I've been pretty good at, but still work at all the time because I'm an extrovert. So I have to stop myself and make myself listen to people. Right. But um, I, I would say that'd be number one. And number two, these days I've been thinking a lot about this idea of being willing to go against the status quo and stand up and, and elicit changes and, um, and use that empathy that you have to get people to follow you, not in any type of coercive or nefarious way, but to do awesome things so that people want to be around you and take them with you and, and treat them fairly and, and treat them as uh, equals. Surround yourself with smarter people. Like you said, you, you keep Scott with you because you know he's, he's smarter and more talented. Um, you know, I, I would love to do the same thing as a leader. So that's top two qualities I would throw in. I, I think, I mean, I like, I like, I like the, uh, I like what you said there about the empathy. I think that, I mean, what do you think about like um, the development? Like, you know, to me, like, you know, I, I managed a pretty large team for a while. And like the one thing that I saw more than anything that was like always lacking, and maybe it's just like an individual thing, but it was when someone stopped, 
to figure out like, what are my goals? Me personally, like, you know, like when I had a manager that basically I'll never forget, like he said to me, he's like, what, what is your, what is your goal in five years? And this is, I'm working for him now, right? Like it's not like mm-hmm. an, an interview question, literally it was like a performance review. And he said, what yeah. are your goals in five years? And I said, I don't know where I could go. Like, yeah. you know, like that's always a hard thing. It's like, you know, somebody who, you know, you need somebody in a way that can believe in you to say, well, man, he thinks I can do it. And I, I said, well, I don't know. Where, where, where do you think I could, where do you think I could be? And he said, well, he was a VP at the time. He said, well, I think you could be in my job. And I was like, nowhere close to being a VP. And I was like, what? you think that I could be a VP? And all of a sudden, my entire mind shifted, right? Like all of a sudden, it wasn't me saying I want to be a VP. It was a VP saying you can do this. And then that kind of set me off on this path. And so like what I did when I managed my team is I always like sat down with with people like on performance reviews and I'm like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do in, in three to five years? And it's a question that a lot of people are, like take back, back because they don't know how to answer it, right? Because we don't really, yeah. I think when, once we get to our career, we might have these high level goals, but we don't really know how to make them happen. And I remember this one guy said to me, he said, um, man, I would love to figure out, uh, I would love to figure out how you got to where you are and, and copy it. And I'm like, well, you don't have to figure out, I'll, I'll tell you. And the guy was blown away. And I will tell you that he was, he was kind of my, in a way, now I had an employee that worked for me who was my biggest cheerleader. Mm. He was hoping that I got promoted so that he could get, right? Like all of a sudden you got people pulling you from the top, people pushing you from the bottom. You've built this team, but I think it all started. and, And like, it all starts with, I think having somebody around who is actually interested in what you're trying to achieve. Like, and maybe that's a form of empathy. I don't, I don't know. Some people say, I don't, I'm not very, you know, you know, empathetic. Uh, what, what's the word mark? Uh, uh, Com- compassionate. Compassionate. So maybe con- sympathy and, or empathy and compassion are tightly. Right. Well, Andy, in when, when Scott things. coaches, he's got a mini bat, right? He's, he's more yeah. like the Bobby Knight, you know, style of coaching old well, school, <laughs> like get it done and get it done now no excuses and pushes people. Some people need that. Pass their li- and, and I think a lot of people need that. They do. Um, but he, 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 I mean, look, we, we, we haze Scott, but he does have that softer side where he can, cause he's been there and he's been through yeah. the struggle and he, and he knows what they're going through. So he does have that empathy. He's like, look, this isn't easy. Right. Especially when people are, uh, let's say, you know, struggling with, let's say Craigslist ad sticking he knows what it's like and and it can be empathic. And I think what happens for leaders is they do skip that piece as if it's it's like a sign of weakness. Well, of course we have this all figured out, but no one really has it all figured out. And I think a good leader um, is aware that we're doing this together and that we're struggling together. We're succeeding together. Um, But I think I'm talking too much, Andy. So let's have you jump in and, um, and talk a little bit about, you know, if you, you know, leadership gets kind of bandied around all the time, right? And empathy and all these qualities. What's some of the worst advice you see given your, in your area of expertise? Well, I would connect that back to what Scott was talking about. And I, and I applaud what you did and what you talked about, Scott. I think some of the worst managers out there are have sort of a, a scarcity mindset. And I think we've all worked with managers like this where they feel like they need to protect their job. And if they give you too much um, ex, you know, capabilities um, or you know too much, you're too talented, this guy's better than me. He's going to take my job. And so they don't help you get ahead. And um, people don't like working for people like that. They leave. Um, you know, there might be other, um, I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of other bad advice, but if I could go back to Scott's question on, on good advice and what makes good managers, you know, the opposite of that. Um, I run a manager training, was just doing this last week uh, out in the Bay Area. And um, for, for managers, there's kind of three components. And the one of them, the first one is 
to know your role, know how you play a role in the company and how you can motivate your team and get more results out of them, how you can multiply them by giving them the tools they need, having that empathy, um, having those conversations. Uh, the second one is to know the business. The more you know about how the business works, the easier it is to convey that to uh, the people you work for. I mean, I think we've all, uh, again, a bad manager is going to be someone that maybe they care about you, but they have no idea how the company works. And when you ask questions, they can't connect you to why things are going on. And then the other piece is to be able to connect the team. You know, are you asking those questions? Do you understand what your, the people on your team really want out of the job and out of life and uh, help them get to that. Even if it's not to be, to take your job or to move up in the company, what if it's, you know, I just want to work the hours I need to work and put food on the table for my family and I've got other stuff going on. Well, great. Let's talk about how we can make that happen so that we both win. Um, and I think it's really making that connection and understanding who they are and, and what they want to get out of it and helping them understand why you're doing the things you're doing and how they can play a bigger role and making sure that they feel valued and they're not just doing a job. I mean, if you look at, um, there are, I don't like to generalize, but you look at studies about the millennial generation, which is now the largest um, population in the workforce, uh, a lot of studies say that they want to feel like they're part of something bigger and that they're making a difference. And if you can help people, and it really everybody feels that way, I think. And if you can help people feel more like that, um, they're going to be happy and more engaged and, and more productive at work. So that's my, uh, I guess my tips on management, given uh, your questions. So, so Andy, you know, given your background of, you know, both parents are teachers, you know, work really hard in school, go to a good college, get a good job, sort of the conventional wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got an MBA. I mean, do you feel that for your children, you're going to go ahead and give them that same advice? Or what advice would you give them today? Oh, that's a that's an interesting question. I have two kids. And um, I was just having this discussion uh, a week ago with um, the guys in my mastermind group that I'm in. And uh, we were talking about that we're all entrepreneurs. And the value of traditional education um, versus experience getting out there, starting a business. And I would say I've, I've definitely softened a lot from where I grew up. I think there are a lot of different uh, tracks that people can go down. I've certainly met a lot of, made a lot of friends recently who don't have um, more than a college degree or even a college degree at all who are very successful in business. And I think there's a lot of things you can do. You could go out and start a business and, and gain a lot of experience from that. Um, you could go and get more non-traditional education. I'm big on personal growth. And um, I just went to a Tony Robbins seminar a few weeks ago and it was amazing. And all the things I learned from that, um, I wanna take my kids when they're teenagers to, to some Tony Robbins seminars and learn about life, things that they won't learn in college. But I would love for them to go to college too, um, because I think there are a lot of things that you can learn there. And one of the biggest things, you can get other places, but one of the biggest things is, is relationships. I think everything in life most of success in life is about relationships. I think it goes back to who you know, who you've met, who you're friends with. And um, I have a lot of friends from those experiences in college and especially in business school. Um, I've made friends in other places. Um, you know, having this podcast was a great way to connect with people. And I like to think that, that we're going to be friends now and know each other. But, and, and just as an example, like before we met, I never knew anybody who invested in raw land. And what if one day I was like, hey, I really think that could be a good opportunity. Who do I know? And now I know the land geek, right? You and I know each other. I've got your number. I could call you. Um, and that's what this stuff is all about. I think I, mean, I think back to all the jobs I've had, um, the business opportunities I've had, the one I currently have uh, has been all about relationships. My wife is currently um, getting involved in a startup that could turn out to be a really big opportunity. And it's all because I met this guy at a podcast conference a few months ago. Um, and just talk to them and build a relationship. And so I think there's a lot of different ways to do that. But I think, you know, being in a classroom or being on a college campus is a great place and time where people do build a lot of those, a lot of those relationships. So I still think it's valuable, but um, I'm definitely more open-minded these days than I was growing up on the idea that you could, they don't have to, you know, we don't have to force college. There's a lot of other things that, that kids could do and, and still get great experience and be successful. Yeah, I, I agree. Scott Todd, what, what's your advice right now to the kids? 
Uh, my, my advice, um, you know, like <laughs> you, Mark, you know, like I, I have a college degree, right? Like I, I got a master's degree and everything. And I think that, um, I think that the tide has shifted in a way to where you don't necessarily always have to go to college, right? I don't think that every person is a uh, university material. And what I mean by that is like, there, there are great paying jobs that you can get without a university, right? Like you can be a land investor, yeah. a real estate investor, right? Like you don't necessarily have to go to college to do that. What you need is you need, you need motivation, right? Like you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have that burning desire to, to do it, to, to do anything. And like, there's people that, you know, there's teachers out there that are, you know, making, you know, 40, $50,000 a year that have $70,000 worth of, of uh, student loan debt. Right. And then there's, you know, then there's like, uh, I don't know, air condition guys or welders or electricians that basically went to a trade school. They're probably making more than the teacher with no student loan debt. Right. So I think right. that, you know, it, I think that you really have to have that honest discussion and, you know, you, I think as parents, we have to kind of have that open eye set to say, um, hey, you know, some, if, if your passion is to be a teacher, look, the world needs teachers. And unfortunately, you can't go to, you can't, you can't just go and say, hey, I'm a teacher. You have to have education to do it. Right. Right. Yes. So yep. d d does that mean that you need to go to Harvard? No, it doesn't mean that you go to Harvard. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you're going to be, um, I don't know, an attorney. Uh, you know, your mission is going to be to be the CEO of a fortune 300 company. Well, you better go to a school that's going to groom you for that. But I think you, you really have to know what, what your child's hoping to achieve and also yeah. kind of match that up to their abilities. I, I, there's something I want to jump on there, Scott. I think and this is just personal opinion, but you mentioned kind of a trend. And I think I feel like paying attention to the, to the business world, the tide has shifted a little bit. There are definitely some jobs that will always require that degree, like you said. And I, but I think we're coming off a peak maybe a few years ago where I just felt like you had to have a college degree. It was like table stakes because everybody was trying to get a good job and jobs required a college degree. But I think as we enter the gig economy, the so-called gig economy, and more and more people are kind of doing their own thing and uh, making money in different ways, people will probably value experience more. Um, you know, again, going back to if I'm trying to get into land investing, I really don't care where you guys went to college. I care more that you've done 5,000 deals and that you know what you're doing, right? That's going to be more important to me. Uh, so, but again, and, and you know, even with a lawyer, you want to know what kind of experience they have, but it's kind of table stakes that they have to have a law degree. So some things that'll never change, but others, it's really maybe not that necessary. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, last time I went to the doctor, I didn't look at their degree, right? I'm, <laughs> you kind I of assumed. assumed I assumed had. like, yeah, but you know, it's not like I, you know, I did a background check and I checked their transcripts. Um, I just kind of assumed it. Um, and what I'm not gone, like if they went to Harvard for medical school or they went to, you know, somewhere else, and like a degree is a degree. They got trained. That's all I care about. Like, okay, now fix my foot. Right. Right. Or whatever it is. Um, so Andy, what's been the best or most worthwhile investment that you've made recently? It could be an investment of money or time, energy or otherwise. The best worthwhile investment besides the time that I took to, to come on this podcast and have you on my podcast. It, it right? might, that might actually be the best investment that you've ever made because um, of that contact, but yeah. you know, I, um, God, there's been a lot of great things, but I mentioned it just a moment ago. Um, I'm still kind of high off of this. It's been about a month. Uh, my wife and I went to unleash the power within, uh, which is the four day Tony Robbins, uh, seminar. It was down in Palm beach. I think he does it three or four times a year in the U S and it was a significant investment for us, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars for a ticket. And, um, I had not been following him for a long time, but I took the, the, a lot of friends told me how great it was and we needed to go. And it was fantastic. I mean, what a great investment, the things that we learned um, and it brought us closer together. Uh, I think doing it together was, was awesome. And um, just a great experience. A lot of lessons. I've got a notebook full of notes. I've been um, using some of the, the knowledge to uh, help and coach other people since then. And I think it's something that's going to pay off for a long time. You know, speaking of, uh, I would call that more alternative or non-traditional education, maybe. 
um, kind of in line with what we're talking about. So I would what, say, what was, your, what was your biggest takeaway from unleash the power from within? Biggest takeaway. Oh man. Um, a couple things. Number one is, uh, I'll give you a phrase, uh, trade your expectations for appreciation. You could change it, change your whole life if you do that. And a lot of people are upset, uh, angry about certain things. And what's the root of all disappointment and anger comes from missed expectations. And if I catch myself doing that, or you can catch yourself doing that and change that to appreciation for the situation you have, figuring out what you can learn from it, uh, you can move on and grow from things so much quicker. It's amazing. Uh, the other one was uh, we dedicated, he dedicated a significant amount of time on the third day to overcoming limiting beliefs and um, setting more empowering beliefs for ourselves. And, um, you know, I was, I, I considered myself a fairly confident person, but I realized I still had some limiting beliefs that were holding me back. And to go through that exercise and to basically kill those limiting beliefs and just instill new empowering beliefs. Um, I have been more confident over the last month since I left that in myself and my abilities uh, since uh, in my whole life, the, the most of my whole life, I would say. And it has allowed me to accomplish more things. I've had people coming to me, um, telling me how impressed they are and what they admire with me. And I'm, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to prove a point because I still have those, you know, I, I like to think of myself as a fairly humble guy, but I'm confident, more confident in myself than I've ever been. And it was because of that and what I did at that event, which was awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think confidence is very different than cocky, right? Yeah. Um, people like quiet confidence. People are repelled by sort of cocky, you know, um, swagger, but, um, Scott Todd, we kind of, we kind of like to rip on Tony Robbins a little bit here, you know, Bring like it. the Netflix, the Netflix, I'm not your guru. You yeah. know, like the, like the, the cultish sort of feeling of it. And now, you know, you're like the fourth or fifth person to really say how great he is and his events are. And I'm starting to drink the Kool-Aid. I think, Scott, we're going to have to go to one of these events and really <laughs> find out for ourselves. They say you can't knock until heck, you try it, right? Yeah. What the heck is going on here? Hey, Mark, are we sitting in the gym? I've got the website up right now. Are we sitting in the general admission um, for the next one? Or are we going to the Diamond Premier right in the front row? Andy, does it matter, General or Diamond Premier? Uh, I sat in the back because that's what fit my budget. Uh, if you could afford to sit in the front, I think it would be amazing. But I really don't think it matters. There were 10,000 people there, and just being in the room with him is like a, just an incredible experience. The man is 57, and he has more energy than any person I've ever encountered in my entire life. I think it's that yeah, dumb I mean, tank. Yeah, the, you know what it is? I think it's a testament to his purpose, right? He's doing this... Uh, it's such a bigger purpose than himself yes. because he doesn't, he doesn't need anything else. No. Right. Like what's going to motivate this guy to get up in the morning. And it's, it's really to help other people. And, and when you have a, a purpose that's so big and so powerful, you've got tons of energy. You can't wait to get going. And I, I think a lot of people, you know, skip that. And that's kind of like, we're going back to that other question about education. Like I know as myself as a parent, I'm anxious, right? I don't want them to suffer, mm -hmm. right? Their happiness, if I'm really, really honest, isn't probably forefront in my mind. It's more about security, right? What can I do as a parent to make sure that they're more secure? And the traditional route is go and get a good college education, get a good job, where I know instinctively and intuitively because I've lived it, that's not going to make them very happy. That's not what you wanted for yourself. It's not what I wanted for myself. And yet I can't help but say to them, Hey, you gotta you gotta study hard in school, and and do all these things. Where in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, do you really? I mean, you know, you can just Google it and get all the information you want now, and learn whatever you want, and go deep with it, and and probably be really happy. But um, it's just hard. It's hard it's, to kind of. It's turn that it constant balance in parenthood, and I I think you guys are probably more advanced and with more experience than I am. But it's that balance between you know, not coddling them, but like making sure that they're secure and have everything they need and also challenging them, challenging them and making sure that they overcome challenges because we all know that's what we actually learn from. Right. Right. Exactly. So we're at that point in the podcast, Andy, where we're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? 
So I'm going to be a little bit more general here and give advice. We're in December of 2017. We're coming up on the new year. This is where a lot of people start to say, hey, what am I going to do next year? Maybe I should set some goals or some um, resolutions, whatever it is. My advice, my tip of the week is to block off some time and sit down and write some very concrete, smart goals for 2018, whether you're a believer in writing goals for the entire year or you want to do it on a quarterly basis, which has been uh, trendy lately uh, to kind of do things quarter by quarter, but sit down and write some smart goals for every area of your life. Um, go and look up uh, Google the wheel of life. I don't have a website to send it to you, but um, you can get it from Tony Robbins or a bunch of other places um, to kind of think about where you are in different areas of your life, work, uh, relationships, spirituality, health, that sort of thing. And where are you really satisfied and where do you feel like you want to make some improvements and set some goals around that, some smart goals. And I'll take that a step further, um, not just a goal, but write down a result. What is a result that you want to achieve? And then start to write down uh, the methods that you're going to use to achieve that. What are the, what's the action that you're going to take to get there? Because I think that Sometimes we're like, oh, I want things to change next year. But unless you write down a goal and start to, uh, you know, put a system in place and take action on that, things don't ever change. And then the last piece of advice connected to that I'll tell you uh, is to tell a friend, find an accountability partner, someone who can hold you accountable, that knows what you're trying to do, that can support you. Um, if I tell you guys that I'm going to do something, then you're more likely, I'm more likely to do it because I know that um, you're watching me. So I'm leading a whole meeting, on, a, a call on this uh, in, the, in the next week for a bunch of dads in the, the group I'm in. And I may do uh, a bigger one if I have enough interest. But um, there's a lot of courses and books and stuff out there on this. You can go find your own. I'm not going to recommend a specific one. Uh, but I would just say go block some time before the end of the year, uh, if you're listening to this before the end of the year and, uh, and set some goals for the new year. All right. Fantastic. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? I'm starting to write goals right now. As Scott's telling me, uh, his tip, man, I mean, that that's gold right there, but Hey Mark, check out this, uh, this app. It's called Gifable G I it's a, and it's for the Mac. It's in the Mac store, which I know you love. It's G I F A B L E Gifable. And it's a cool like screen recording app that allows you to, re, uh, to create GIFs. And I mean, like we all know that GIFs are pretty dang good, especially for uh, relaying information quick, like screenshots or screen grabs or what to go do. It's $1.99 and think about all of the ways that you could just very quickly without having to fire up a screen recording system, just you just wanna show something, you can do it with this. Wait a second. I thought it just creates GIFs. Like I can do screen recording? Well, it's screen recording small GIFs that you could send to a VA or somebody that's, that's like constantly asking you like, oh, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? No, man, you don't have to worry about that. You can just simply like make a, a quick GIF for them and then you're off to the races. You don't even have to like record a whole video or anything. This is better than Zoom? Or just for well, look, things. Zoom, 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 and I just sent you another link there. Zoom has a, uh, what's cool about Zoom is that, you know, you can go in there and, uh, you know, you can record a whole kind of, kind of uh, tutorial, just like we're doing, you know, like we do all the time. But maybe right. you just need to show somebody like, they're like, I can't figure out how to, like, where's the button for this? No problem. Just fire this thing up and screen record your, your screen and just go click the button so that they need to go It's basically like a, like a three second screen recording or something. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. It. You got it. Okay. I don't know. Check it out at gifable.co.uk. Gifable.co.uk. It'd be cool All if right. we could do one right now. Well, I'm buying it right now. So it's, well, look it's at, done. look at you. You'll stop. Like even their website says, stop waiting, start making gifts. Yeah. You know what I, you know what I like about it is that I can buy it now on the Mac just with my fingertip. Yeah. I mean like wait, look wait. at their use cases. They got great use cases. It's Demonstration of in. like an interface. This is terrible. Why is it making me sign in? Apple's Social media some stuff. You can create like how many times like I know in your own boot camp presentation you use GIFs, right? Now you can I create do. your own. You, right, now now instead of having the the kid it could be you dancing. All right, I'm buying it. 
<laughs> Hold on. Jeez. I got to edit. You know Man, what? I got, I, I'm, just, really, I'm really just, upset that I, I, I have to put in my password again. I just got a 19 cent commission off of Mark. Hawking all these apps. One just day easy. it'll all know the technology will know exactly what you want, when you want it. And it'll just appear there. But for now you got to sign in. Yeah. Why is that? With my phone, with my phone, I just look at it, give it that like, Hey, it's me What's again. Up? Look, and it, it's off to the races. All right. All right. I just bought it. Here it goes. All right. My tip of the week is learn more about Andy Storch at the aptly named website, Andy Storch dot com and look um i've got uh, abundance mentality you can even check out his podcast entrepreneur hot seat because why not i mean you know as long as you just gonna do find us, you there yeah as long as you do us three little <laughs> favors because andy storch the only reason he came on the podcast was he looked at our reviews he's like okay this is a podcast worth my time oh, so you on. got you got to subscribe Subscribe, get a rate, get a review of the podcast, send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And look, everyone needs money. If you have unlimited funds and we kind of walk you through it, Scott and I are going to do a webinar. Um, go to tlfolio.com, tlfolio.com. You've got a note, but you need the cash to do another deal sell 12 to 18 months of your income stream, get your money out, redeploy that money and start supercharging your returns. Go to tlfolio.com. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Andy Storch, are we good? I'm good. I appreciate you plugging the website. I would just say that uh, I, I'm also pretty active on Facebook and LinkedIn if anybody wants to connect with me there. And uh, this was great. I really appreciate you having me on. Awesome. And we will, uh, we'll put in the, uh, the links to all that good social media stuff as well. So uh, I want to thank the listeners and let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody.